Welcome back to Becky Amio Horse Training, and I am starting a series that I wish I would have started four years ago when I first put out the videos regarding uh, bar spread, bar angle, tree, bar angle, all of that good stuff, and I just decided to do it now. I've gone through a lot of saddles since then, and I thought it would be really helpful if I told you guys a little bit about all the saddles that I've purchased along the way and what I've tried and how they fit the horses that I have in training and the horses that I've kept along the way. So the weather's starting to turn a little bit outside and it's getting kind of crummy out there and I am recovering from a surgery I had. Don't worry, it's not going to make a Make Good Choices Monday video. It was kind of a rep repetitive injury and um, uh, I was unloading square bales uh, since we are low on pasture this year we had to buy hay and uh, just from the repetitive movement I had to have a surgery repairing a tendon in my wrist and uh, just a couple week recovery no big deal anyway I thought it'd be a good time to do this video so if you guys want to know all about the Corriente saddle the barrel style saddle and my experience with it stick around i will share with you all of my thoughts and show you a little bit of video of me riding in it thanks for watching okay so the first saddle we're going to do in this review is the corriente stripped down barrel racing saddle it's ultra lightweight it uh, has these cutouts for the fenders and uh, shorter skirts on it and just lighter weight overall. Um, I want to say it's still around 23, 24 pounds, um, but really, really nice, nice saddle for uh, what you get, what you pay for. Uh, the customer service with Corriente Saddlery was fantastic. Very, very helpful over the phone, very, very helpful over email. The website has expanded. It's, it, it allows a lot of educational videos on how to fit your saddle, how to break your saddle in, uh, what kind of tree it is, what kind of tree options you get, which in the barrel saddle, you do not get any tree options anymore. The tree is a standard seven inch gullet and uh, it uh, is a 90 degree bar angle, which means it's gonna fit more of your angular horses that are built like this rather than the ones that are built like this, okay? Okay, so this saddle that I purchased was a 14 inch finish seat. I got the bicycle seat, padded seat. This is suede. This is all rough out. Um, really good quality leather for what you pay for. I paid right around $1,100 for this saddle plus shipping. Yeah. All right, so here's a view of the gullet and you actually cannot truly measure the gullet once the saddle has been put together. But I do wanna give you this view and give you a good idea of what we're dealing with. You'll see pictures on Facebook or on the internet where somebody sticks a measuring tape across and they all do it in a different spot. And ideally it's supposed to be concho to concho, which obviously that's not an accurate reading if this is truly a seven inch gullet. And then, you know, if you went down even further and, you know, showed a little bit wider, this would show a little bit more of your bar spread there. Now let's take this saddle and move it forward a little bit because I always like a view without a pad there so you get an idea of the angle. Uh, you'll see some other saddles out there that are spread a little bit wider. Some are a little bit narrower. And, and I just want people to be able to see that kind of view of what the angle looks like on this saddle. Now, it is said to be a 90 degree uh, bar angle or a 45 degree bar angle, which means it's going to fit a little bit more angular type of horse. Uh, not your wider type, not your wider... Uh, stocky quarter horse type. I think it's going to fit more of your speed bread type horse. Um, and then let's move down and take a look at something that I disliked about this saddle. Every saddle comes standard with this breast collar ring here. And this is too low. Even on a mature horse with a broad shoulder and chest, this is too low and it's ineffective placement of where this breast collar ring goes. And I will show you that later on, on another horse. Uh, I have three mature horses to put this saddle on to show you where it fits. Um, I went ahead and went to a saddle maker and I had a ring put in up higher. It wasn't super expensive. It was about 40 bucks. 
you know, and his time and my time go in there. He pulled all of this apart and drilled a hole and then ran a rivet in there so that this fits more effectively. When you use this ring down here, it requires you to use the uh, wither straps that you see so prevalent in the barrel racing arena now. And ultimately your breast collar is completely ineffective if you're using a wither strap like that. It's not really doing its intended purpose. And not only that, but it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's pulling across your horse's shoulders and the top of his neck. So you're gonna get some pain or irritation over the top of his neck when you have pieces of equipment that aren't working properly together. Another part of this saddle that I really didn't care for is that it came with a nylon latigo. And I understand the nylon latigos are uh, more inexpensive and they allow the saddle to be the most cost effective. I took those nylon latigos off and I put in leather latigos uh, myself. Um, something else about this saddle now now these fenders were actually really easy to uh, mold and conform and turn I did exactly what they said on the website they tell you to get the entire fender wet and then you know stick your broomstick through it like you would traditionally on any saddle to turn your stirrups when you don't have the Hamley twist here and they did turn really really nice for me I was really impressed and you don't have to worry about it staining your your leather st staining the fender or anything the water absorbs and it bends really nice and on the other side I put on the smooth side of this leather I put a uh, neat's foot oil on there to help soften it as well and this this fender turned really nice now i have never personally gotten along really well with these sort of stirrups these aluminum stirrups um, when you get a little bit of mud in your boots and you go to mount or there's still mud stuck in your boots you do get it gets slippery and these treads do fill up and it becomes a slippery surface not a grippy surface um, and for whatever reason i did not get along with these stirrups with this saddle now that's all opinion you guys you know you get along with whatever stirrup you get along with um i'm not telling you yay or nay on these stirrups um i'm a little bit different i also ride with a boot that has grip in it i ride with an Ariat terrain boot i don't ride with a traditional pull-on leather sole boot so you know you have to do what works for you but I, i'm just telling you i did not get along well with these stirrups with this saddle so i switched the stirrups out to a basic plain leather stirrup, okay? Um, but like I said, this was really easy to conform. It's really, really good quality leather for what you pay for. There's a lot of saddles out there that are inexpensive and the leather is just crap. It's really cheap, poor, you know, second kind of leather, um, feels very plasticky. And if you've ever felt good quality leather versus, um, poor quality leather, you guys will know what I'm talking about with the difference in the feel. Um, so as far as that goes, really good feel. I really, really like this, this back cinch. Um, I like the way it ties in here. It makes it easy to take it off. So, so you have you have your your hoof pick holder back here and the way that they folded this over and tied it together makes it easy to pop that off if you ever want to take your back cinch off where other saddles they flip over this way and then you're trying to take them out and you're stuck with this getting in the way of that slot one thing that i wish they could do for this saddle but i understand because of the skirting on it you, you couldn't do it, but I wish I could have put a D-ring back here. If I would have put a D-ring back here, I would have had to, had to have done a more full skirt on it. That's why it's just a cutout here. So I wish I could have had that D-ring because I could have utilized that D-ring more in training, bending a horse's head around, tying them back, tying stuff to it. And instead, you kind of have to be careful with this because this probably could be a little bit more on the fragile side long term. Um, but otherwise, very, very good quality, very nice back cinch. Um, as far as the seat goes, now let's look at the, the height of the seat and the width of the pommel. Okay, so let's talk about the cantle height. 
As you can see to the back of the measurement of the back of the Cheyenne roll, it's four inches, but you can see that the finished seat height was actually five. The Cheyenne roll on the cantle brings it back to four inches, but you can see in that angle, it is truly a five inch seat, okay? And the only reason that I get a Cheyenne roll on my cantle is because it allows me to grip the saddle and pick it up and throw it up on the horse, okay? Uh, there's a lot of folks that really like that pencil roll. And what I am told about the pencil roll, I don't have any experience riding in a pencil roll seat, is that it actually tilts you more forward. And if you are gonna go with the pencil roll, you need to go with a seat that's a half an inch bigger in seat size, okay? So half an inch bigger this way because it's gonna tilt you and bring you more forward and tighten up your seat a little bit. Now, something else here that I wanna show you is the width for your thigh. This is really important. So this is a nine inch space for your thigh. This is, if not more important than your overall seat length, okay? Being 14 and a nine inch thigh gap, okay? And we'll get to why that's so important here shortly. Now, the other thing that I really like about this saddle is the, the swell on the pommel. This is a 12 inch set swell, okay? I have had a Martha Josie saddle before and I wish I would have done a review on that saddle to show you guys. If I have pictures of it, I will post them in here. But the swell on that saddle was huge and it wouldn't allow me to get forward on a horse and it would actually slap me back down. So if I was posting in that saddle, it was this constantly bang, 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 bang. And uh, I didn't care for that. So I, I really prefer this 12 inch swell. And I, I actually really, really like the height of this, of this pommel. I really wish I could recreate this. Now, the, the height of the horn, really like the height of this horn, three inch height. It's absolutely perfect. Um, I, I really appreciate the height and that it's slightly tilted forward. Um, I really dislike the horns that are the four inch ones that are just way out there, especially a rawhide wrapped one that's four inches long. I think those are ridiculous and those are just asking for an injury. As a general rule, I often don't grab a horn like this. I tend to grab my pommel like this and push on it when I go into a turn. I don't always grab like the intended use. Um, and then we have a two and a half inch horn cap here. I think it's perfect, it's just right. But of course, this is all for me. This is not, I mean, you know, you guys have to do what you like. And the reason I'm doing this review is just to help you make an educated decision when it comes to buying a saddle. Uh, so that is uh, that is the, uh, the pommel and cantle in a nutshell. Um, let me sit in the saddle and I will show you uh, give you a good idea of where my thigh hits in this saddle and why this thigh gap is so important. Okay, so this is me sitting in the saddle. This is my thigh gap, okay? This is a saddle that definitely sits you down in it, not on it. It gives you a really secure feeling. And, you know, I really, really like that. I, I like how I feel in it. But to be completely honest, I think I should have gotten a half size bigger. I am generally a 14 inch, but I think because of the height of this cantle, I'm not used to riding in a cantle this high. I generally ride in a three inch cantle. I think because of that height, it's pushing me more forward. And that forward feeling is a little uncomfortable to me. I already get forward enough in my saddle. If you guys haven't watched enough of my videos, I'm a forward rider anyway. I don't need something to push me forward. Um, and so I feel like the seat pocket has me just a little bit more forward. Um, now I see a lot of people like on Facebook talking about reviews and also online at different forums. They talk about wanting something really deep, something that holds them in. Yeah, this is going to hold you in. But here's the thing. If the saddle does not fit your horse, it's not gonna hold you in, it's not gonna sit you deep. It's gonna sit you forward and it's gonna set you up in that position to go right up over your horse's head and swing your legs back behind you, okay? So we're gonna put this on a few horses 
and I'm going to show you the fit on a couple of different mature, mature horses and show you the difference in how it sits on them and how I sit. We're going to cinch it up. I'm going to ride it and I'm going to show you how I sit in it riding those different horses. Um, unfortunately, the horse that it fit the best, I, I recently sold and so I don't have him to show you. But uh, ultimately, the biggest problem with this tree is it does have a lot of rock into the tree. And if you don't understand what that means, um, I'll try to insert a picture or a video here. But what happens is, is the tree has some more dip to it. And it's for a horse's back that kind of has the hollow behind the shoulders. And it's for a horse that has a little bit higher withers, which I don't have any of those on my property. So it's going to fit that confirmation a lot better than say JJ, my good barrel horse. And I'll show you it on her and I'll show you, you know, how it, how it fits on her. Um, so yeah, that's in a nutshell. I'm going to put my other saddle on the stand here and I'm going to show you my saddle that I ride in on a regular basis. The one that fits just about everything I put it on, you know, with a little bit of shimming and I'll show you the difference in that fit and compare and contrast the two saddles. Okay. Okay, so this is my custom saddle I had made by True Partner Saddlery, Mark Jones, down in Ganton, Georgia. This is the main saddle that I ride in to run barrels on. I start colts with it. Um, obviously, it's a little bit too wide in the bar spread for the colts, but I'm able to shim it up and it works pretty good. It's a functional fit, okay? But I'll give you a quick measurement on it. Uh, the thigh gap on this is 10. Okay, so already we're one inch wider. Okay, editing Becky here. Uh, when I watched this clip back and I saw that the thigh gap is actually nine inches on this saddle as well, um, I realized, you know, it must have to do with the ground seat in this saddle, making it feel like it is a wider seat or I have more room in it than uh, what I originally thought. Uh, like I said, I think it has to do with the ground seat and of course we'd have to tear these saddles apart to look at the difference in their ground seats to see if that's the reason why it feels like I have more room in this saddle and it very well could go back to the cantle being uh, not as high as the cantle on the Corriente. Now look at this. The actual finished seat size is 13 and three quarters. Pretty interesting, isn't it? How the other saddle is a 14, only a nine inch thigh gap, but this one is 13 and three quarters and has a 10 inch thigh gap. It also has a fully padded seat and it has a highly technical foam in here that allows for shock absor absorption, not repelling. So it's gonna absorb shock as I land in this saddle, okay? And then it only has a three inch cantle on it, okay? So let me sit in this saddle, oh, real quick, the pommel. Pommel is a 12 inch pommel on it. I would prefer it to be a little bit higher. If I could make this saddle again, I would make it a little bit higher. Um, I would probably leave the horn just as it is, unless I was going to uh, use it more for roping and such. Um, I do use this saddle for ponying and colts. The tree has been reinforced. Uh, so that I can use it for branding and I can use it for um, dragging calves. I always tell my saddle maker I'm never going to go out into the pasture and rope a bull or even a thousand pound heifer. I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm always going to rope the little stuff to be doctored on. I'm always going to be dragging calves or I'll be uh, ponying a yearling off of it. So that's the only thing that I would change about this horn maybe um, long term if I were to make this entire saddle again. Now I'm going to get in this saddle, sit in it, and you're going to see where I sit in it versus the other one. With this saddle, definitely feel, feel like I'm more on it than in it. Um, not a huge cutout on the pommel. Like I said, I would prefer to have the pommel just a little bit higher. But when I'm on a colt in this saddle, I do like kind of the feel of the open space because if it does get a little bit Western, I'm not going to get hung up on this saddle at all uh, and get banged up very much in the event that I do end up, you know, coming off. Um, now, I feel absolutely fine with the height of this cantle. I never feel like I'm gonna come out of it. Um, I 
don't feel like I'm being repelled when I take off from a barrel or take off from a hard turn when I'm running. Um, and I feel like the seat pocket, I am more in it than being pushed forward by it. And I think that has to do with the wider leg gap. When you have that little bit wider leg gap there of that additional inch and the seat, you know, it's just a custom saddle. It has had a lot more care put into it in the design. Um, it's, it's the difference between a custom saddle and a production line saddle. And of course I spent quite a little more money on it and, um, you know, waited quite a bit longer for it, but it really has been customized to my pelvic bone. The ground seat has been built to a woman's body. It's narrower. I don't feel like I'm sitting on a 55 gallon drum. I'm allowed to get more closer contact to the horse. Um, but those are things that, you know, you know, when you're designing custom versus buying something that is a production line saddle that you're spending, you know, substantially less money on. Now, one, you know, the other thing I really like is he put the breast collar rings up in the correct spot. The breast collar fits properly on this saddle. Uh, you know, there's, you know, those little details like that make all the difference in the saddle fit. Super high quality latigos on there. Um, this is all Wicked and Craig leather. Uh, this is rough out. I had smooth out on the cantle and the skirts. I had D-rings put in back here so I can use it for training purposes if need be. Um, the one thing I do wish about the back cinch is that it was made where I didn't have to, I mean, this is obviously higher quality with the lacing here, but uh, if I ever wanted to take my back cinch off, I would have to undo all that lacing and Lord knows we never get the lacing put back in exactly how it was. I wish it was just a, a slot that I could feed the, the, the back cinch into in order to switch it out easily. Uh, but that's how this saddle fits in a nutshell. Like I said, this is the main saddle I use on everything. I use it on every colt that I start at this point. A uh, little bit of shimming is all it takes in the front. It, it has very, very little rock to the tree. It's a 42 degree bar angle and a 13 and a quarter inch bar spread. And it's a six and three quarter inch gullet. So it's gonna fit something a little bit flatter and something that has a kind of a low wide back like colts usually do. You know, they don't have very much withers and they're just kind of flat across their back. And that's honestly the kind of the way JJ is built as well. She doesn't have a super high withers and she never will. That's just not how she's made. Uh, where I believe the other tree on the Corriente saddle is uh, built to fit uh, a more prominent withered horse, a steeper angled shoulder horse, and with a little bit more dip behind the withers, dip in the shoulder. So um, all we have left to do is to stick that saddle on a couple of uh, mature horses and, and see how it fits and watch me ride it and you can see how it rides. All right, we're gonna start out trying these saddles and see how they fit on my good barrel horse. Has to be flicking fast. She is super fit right now. Her top line is really muscular. There's no atrophy behind her shoulders. She doesn't have a super prominent high wither. I think she's an average thickness. I don't think she's an over the top, super thick horse. I don't think she's a candidate for like those nine inch gullets that Martin Saddlery makes. Um, I think she's just an average speed bred horse that is, you know, built to go in a straight line. Um, you know, you know, she's a little bit flatter in her angle. So generally speaking, a 42 degree bar angle is going to fit her the best. But of course, as we all know, the degree of the bar angle is all relative to the saddle maker, but that is what she prefers the best. And we're going to get her reaction when I put the saddles up on her. Uh, she is very, very vocal and reactive when I put a saddle on her that she does not like and one that she does that does not fit her well. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to put those saddles up on her and you guys will get a chance to see. Okay, so this is the Corriente Rough Out Strip Down Barrel Saddle. And I've already put a Navajo blanket up on my mare's back. And um, just to protect the underside of the saddle so I don't get the skirting dirty at all. Um, and we're going to be able to see kind of how it fits her kind of smooth back without any pads or shims or anything to impede the fitness, okay? 
So I'm still kind of a chicken wing here with the bad arm. So bear with me while I get it up there on her. But this saddle is not heavy by any means. You can see that, you know, she's kind of crabby about having it thrown up there. And it's sitting a little bit too forward on her. It needs to come back just a touch to get it to where it allows for some shoulder clearance for her. So if I were to pick up this front leg here and pull it out and reach underneath her at the same time and feel where that shoulder hits, I wouldn't want the front bar pad of that tree to put any pressure on the shoulder when it goes back. There's a lot of problems that we have with barrel horses where they don't reach around a turn or they don't want to reach when we're asking them to run in a straight line even. And, and that can be caused a lot of times by this bar digging right into that shoulder, okay? So something to look, look into. Now, when you look at the way this saddle is fitting from the side view, the pocket looks pretty darn level, okay? It looks pretty darn level. And, you know, there's a, there's a touch bit of rock to it, okay? When it's sitting back that far. And, you know, the angle doesn't look too bad, but you can see how pissed off she gets. When we cinch it up, we're going to see how it fits on her once we cinch it up and, we, and it pulls down. I still think this saddle has too much rock in it for her style of back. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cinch it up this, on this one. Because we talked about it during the initial review. We went ahead and talked about how the breast collar rings were incorrect on this particular saddle even on a mature horse with a mature chest that's well developed and i believe she has a very well developed large front end on her and i don't think these breast collar rings are in the correct spot for where they should be on any saddle let alone a barrel racing saddle. So we're just gonna lightly cinch this up. We're gonna pretend like we got it tight. Okay. And I'm gonna grab a breast collar and stick it on her and you guys can see where the breast collar fits on her for these rings, okay? So I'm gonna put initially put this breast collar on the rings that came with this saddle. So as you can see, they come across at a low angle. This is gonna affect the movement of that shoulder, okay? Anytime that horse reaches out, it's gonna move. And the whole point of the breast collar, it's not for decoration. It's there to help hold your saddle in place, okay? So if I'm making a hard turn, it's gonna hold my saddle in place. If you're a roper, and you're turning steers with it, it's gonna help hold your saddle in place. If it's impeding movement, it's not doing a good job. So these are the rings that I put in up here that I had put in by another saddle maker. Let me adjust this and I'll show you the difference. Here we are up on the top ring. And again, we have a mature horse, an eight year old mare, mature chest, well developed. Now we have the breast collar sitting in the proper spot. It's not going to affect the movement or the point of the shoulder. It's sitting properly and it's going to help this saddle stay in place. And I don't know how to convey that message to Corianta Salary. I asked them if they would put this ring in a different place and they told me no. And that's just the problem that you run into with production line saddles. So that's where that needs to be in order to fit. Now, Again, I think this saddle has too much rock in it. I think the angle is too steep for this particular horse. Um, we'll have our cameraman come around and take a shot of it from this angle so you can kind of see. So we're gonna go from right here and show you the angle. I'm not really making contact right through there. 
I think it's a little bit too steep for this mare's back. I think it's going to fit a horse that's more of a 43 degree bar angle or that 90 degree bar angle, if that makes sense. And we're also getting not getting enough contact back here. So we'll have a cameraman come around the back and show you from the back how much space we have here. Now, a saddle pad would hide all of this. See how much space we have? We're not having any contact through here at all. And I've got it cinched up. I'll pull it up another hole and show you. We're not making any contact with her back at all. Right through here. Look at how much space I can fit in between my hand and that tree. So I really believe that this tree has too much rock to it for this style of back on this horse. Okay, this, so this is Why Not Firewater. He is a four-year-old gray stud that I've been working on and you've seen him in some videos and he's been getting worked um, and fed pretty well here recently and he's had a couple weeks off now with my uh, recent surgery so he's been hanging out just uh, getting a little bit fatter this winter. Uh, I wanted to show his confirmation he is pretty well developed he still has a little bit more filling out to do but he's a little bit more relatively flatter across his top line too. He's going to ultimately have a little bit more withers than JJ does. Though, so here, I want to show you what his top line looks like. He is a touch narrower than the mare is. Um, but again, like I said, he has a little bit more filling out to do. But I'm thinking he is about the same angle as her, that 42 degree angle. And again, that uh, 42 degrees is relative to the saddle maker. Uh, you know, generally speaking, each saddle maker is going to have their own size based on how they make their tree. So there you go. That's his confirmation on his back. And now we're going to go through some saddle fitting on him. So this is the Corriente stripped down barrel saddle. My cameraman threw it up on his back for me because I really shouldn't be lifting anything right now. Um, this saddle fits him pretty darn nice. Um, you can see that the pocket is pretty darn level in it. We could rock it back just a little bit with some shimming, I think, to, to get it a little bit more level. What I would really like to do is ride this saddle on him and see where it ends up after we get done riding and see where it puts me on his back. Um, you know, physically where it puts my leg, where it puts my hips, what kind of position it sets me in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cinch it up and I'm going to put the breast collar on it so we can see what it does if it pulls forward and down when we cinch it up. Um, but this is just a thin Navajo underneath it. It's not changing the fit at all on him. Um, it's just something to protect the fleece on the other side of the saddle so it doesn't get dirty. If my cameraman wants to come in and take a look right through here, the angle looks pretty darn good for right behind his shoulder. And then come behind and you can see, you know, if we pull it down, you know, we're not getting as much space underneath it here. I'm going to go ahead and cinch him up and just get it kind of snug on him. I'm not going to do super tight just yet. And see how it sits on him after it's been cinched. Now we could change the fit of this saddle and we can change how much it moves on his back if we were to put a felt pad on it, but I don't use felt pads. It would affect the integrity of the horse's back and his top line. Um, I'll ride him with a Gen X half pad because those are kind of my lie detector tests. If those wiggle around and move and don't allow a saddle to sit, you know, if the saddle doesn't sit in the middle of their back in the correct spot, with one of those pads on it generally tells me the saddle doesn't fit. That's kind of my last lie detector test that and riding out in the pasture, but we're not going to go out to the pasture to, to go up and down hills to show you guys. Um, that's taken the review a little too far, but you can see um, it's sitting pretty darn level. I might think of maybe shimming it up a little bit, but I, I don't want to have to for the sake of this review. I think it's a functional fit. Um, it'll work in a pinch and I think it's a, a great little saddle for, uh, you know, if you're on a budget and you're looking to get into barrel racing and, you know, you need something that looks apart and you want something pretty and something's going to last you a long time. Um, let me go ahead and put the breast collar on it.
and I have it attached to the top ring right now on the other side. Again, these are the rings that I had custom put in by another saddle maker. When you call Corriente Saddlery, they told me they are not going to move where they place these rings, okay? And that's just, that's just part of getting a saddle that's a production line saddle. It is what it is. So I'm going to go through this top ring up here and put the breast collar on them. You can see that it's sitting in the correct spot. If we pick up this leg and reach forward, it's in the correct spot. It's not impeding shoulder movement. He's gonna take a little stretch out of that. Don't be alarmed if you've never seen a horse do that. That's one way that they stretch. Now, if we go to the lower ring here, it's going to come right across his shoulders in the wrong spot and it's going to come right here. It's going to affect how much he can reach with that shoulder. So then we would have to loosen up the breast collar and then that would affect how well it holds the saddle in place up here. Or we could do the barrel racer thing and we can put a wither strap on it that pulls it up over here. So then we have a pull across the horse's neck right here. Again, cutting a muscle group in half and that pulls the breast collar up into the jugular right here, okay? So that is, that is probably my biggest complaint about this saddle is where the breast collar rings are and how ineffective they are to use them properly as they should be. But I really think that we need to ride this saddle and see what it looks like with me in it and after he's been ridden in it, what he looks like, how the saddle fits, how it moves, how it affects the saddle pad and kind of look at it from that from that viewpoint um, because it's been a while since I put this saddle up on him you know his body has changed in the last six months since I first put this saddle on him so it may fit him better now than it did at the beginning of summer again this is a four-year-old stud he's bred mares this year you know he dropped off a little bit in the spring as he was breeding mares and now that he's not breeding mares and the weather's cooled down a little bit He's put on a little bit more weight and a little bit more muscle. So that may change the fit of our saddle over time as well. So let's take a look at me riding in it and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so for the sake of this review, I wanted to show just some basic walk trot loping and a rollback in this saddle. I didn't even record me actually trying to make a run in it on the barrel pattern because that's going to be a little bit more subjective to everybody's particular style and their horse's style. So I wanted you guys to see that it sits me really nice and straight up. Of course, I have a really strong core and I really use a lot more leg on my horses than I find most people do. I did find that I had to fight with the fenders just a little bit to hold my leg on the horse properly. And again, I go back to this particular style stirrup. I struggled a little bit with this stirrup. I found it a little bit tougher to, you know, get my heels down and hold my leg on and really cue the horse. Of course, some of that is how broken the leather is and this is a relatively new saddle i had very few rides in it um you know maybe 15 20 rides in it so i didn't truly have the fenders really really broken in as they could have been and i might have had a little bit better experience had i had them more broken in but i found as a functional fit and to be able to functionally use this saddle as a tool to effectively ride my horse, I really didn't have a problem with it. It's just that I have something better sitting on the saddle rack inside my tack room, if that makes sense. Now, this horse is also a young stallion. He's really reasonable. He's really easygoing. He's not going to really tell me if he's really having a problem. Um, it, it's just a boy thing. Boy horses generally are pretty quiet when they're having a problem it takes a lot for them to really show you that they're uh dis they're having discomfort or they're not happy in their equipment where a mare is going to be a 
pretty obvious right away when she's having a problem. It That's what I find a kind of across the board, generally speaking, with all the horses that I ride. So all in all, a really functional fit. But when I tried to do more technical maneuvers like you've seen on my page before, the fenders tended to inhibit my ability to really stand up, put some weight in my stirrups, and really get after it and do the rolls and the 360s and the flying lead changes that I like to do when I'm training a horse. That generally has to do because of where the fenders are hung on the tree. And we haven't even gotten into that in this review, but they're they're hung more from the middle of the tree rather than more towards the front near the pommel. And that is going to affect the overall ride. Now, let's take a look at this saddle and how it sits the horse after I've rode. Now, it has pushed the saddle pad short out to the back. And that is because the bar spread is too wide for this horse. So let's take a look at it on yet another. Okay, so this is Harlan's Lucky 7. He is a three-year-old stud. He is a very, very mature stud. He's quite a bit bigger than the last two horses we looked at. He has quite a bit more wither than both of those other two horses, although he is still pretty fit um, compared to most. Um, but he does have a little bit more slope to that top line. So we're going to see a little bit different fit on this horse. Um, Again, let's look at him over his top line. He's going to be just as wide, if not wider, than the two previous horses we looked at on this review so far. But uh, I think he might have a little bit steeper angle to that shoulder, too, uh, just based on how he looks before we even put the saddle on him, okay? So there you go. That is his confirmation. Just pulled out of his pen handful of rides he's just starting to get back in shape again that's a really really mature three-year-old stud all right so my cameraman set the set, set this corriente strip down barrel saddle up on his back for me and uh you know again it doesn't look it's a bad fit it it looks like it keeps the pocket pretty level on it but once we start to kind of play around with it we got quite, quite a bit of rock to it um i feel like it's pulling down on his shoulder just a little bit like it did on both of our previous horses um, I'm gonna go ahead and cinch it up and see how it looks after it's cinched up we got a lot of clearance here in the top just where it's sitting so my guess is is the saddle narrows as it goes closer towards the shoulders but it broadens out and really spreads out as it comes towards the back here a little bit. That's my guess. But ultimately, if we already have all the leather on the tree, we don't really know what's going on underneath there. The only person or animal that really knows what's going on is the horse. And they're going to tell us, you know, whether they like it or not, ultimately. Or their top line is going to tell us. So we'll cinch them up. Just get it snug. And you can see it's pulling down. It's already starting to rock up in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and put this breast collar on. And it's connected to the top ring on the other side. Again, a very mature shoulder on a three-year-old. Most three-year-olds don't look like this unless they're really, really fed up or a, they're a pretty large type pedigree to begin with. Um, and that's going across the shoulder at the correct spot with the ring that I had installed. Again, it would be incorrect if I went from that ring, it would come right across the point of his shoulder and it would impede movement. I'm not sure if I should even bother trying to ride in this saddle on him. We may have to just to see if there's a difference from one horse to the next. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's how it looks on him right now. The angle actually doesn't look too bad. If my cameraman wants to come and take a look and the bar spread actually doesn't look too bad on him. You know, it looks like it's a pretty good fit. And then, you know, it looks like it feels like it's making contact up through here. 
it's just back here that it kind of concerns me a little bit um but i don't know we we may see something entirely different once i ride it and i put a different pad underneath it um and i always like to look at where it ends up after we've rode it a little bit you know you know dry spots wet spots they kind of you know are a pretty good indication of saddle fit sometimes but I think where the saddle ends up after we've rode it and how I look riding in it is going to really tell us, you know, how functional of a fit is on this particular horse. Okay. So, um, again, I, I do like this saddle. I think it's a great starter saddle for somebody who, um, is, uh, you know, looking for something on a budget. And like I said, the customer service was really good but you're gonna need a certain type of confirmation in order for it to be really functional on something and be the most effective and help you out as a rider when it comes to um, how effective you are when you're up in the tap. Okay, so again, we're gonna do just some really basic walk, trot, lope maneuvers on this horse, um, some basic rollbacks, some changes of directions, but we're not going to do any advanced maneuvers. Again, most people aren't going to do advanced maneuvers in this piece of equipment. Um, and like I said before on the previous horse, when I d tried to do advanced maneuvers in this saddle, I found that it got in my way just a little bit. You know, it, it really does help me stay very correct in my position as far as straight you know shoulders hips heels are all underneath me but you have to work at it you know it's, it's not something that's going to come easy to you uh i i really believe that no saddle is going to be this magic cure to help your horsemanship um i found that you know it, i had to fight those fenders just a little bit as far as keeping my leg where I wanted it to be able to support this horse as I walk, trot, and loped around in this circle here. You know, um, there is no magic cure for your lack of strength in the tack. That comes from your core and from your leg muscles, being able to keep your leg on your horse and to use it effectively. Now, this horse, his angle was a lot more correct to fit this particular style saddle so overall you know the fit was a lot better on him than it was in the previous two horses that I showed it on and and uh, he was actually a little bit wider across his shoulders you know he's much more developed than the other horses he's thicker he has he has a little bit more muscling a little bit more meat across his back and so the bar spread is going to fit him quite a bit better than the other two horses now the bar spread i imagine is a 13 and a half inch bar spread that's generally how uh production line saddles are made is with a 13 and a half inch bar spread and he was able to fit that and so when we stop and we take a look at this saddle off of his back and what it looks like it doesn't move the saddle pad i use the same gen x half pad on both horses it has the same six millimeter xrd as an insert so there was a there was a Similar pad under each horse, and we get to see how it works on both of their backs. The saddle pad stayed in position on this horse, whereas on the gray horse, it slid back. So we can see right then and there that the bar spread was too wide on the gray horse, and it fit this buckskin horse quite a bit better. And that is one of the number one things we need to look at when we take a look at how these saddles are fitting our horses is whether it's making our saddle pads scoot out the back or not. And in a felt pad, you're not going to see it. In a felt pad, it's not going to move like that because a felt pad doesn't move with the horse's muscling and their top line the way this fleece pad will with the XRD inside of it. So I hope that helps give you a visualization of how this saddle fits on each and All right, you guys, thanks for watching my review of the Corriente Strip Down Barrel Racing Saddle. You know, I have a really favorable opinion of Corriente now. Um, I, you know, I would recommend this saddle if you have 
a horse with a confirmation that it's going to fit. It is a very functional saddle. It is really high quality for what you're paying for. Um, and, you know, Corianti was great to work with. So, you know, you can't go wrong if all of those things that I talked about and you have a horse with confirmation that it will fit, it's going to be a great fit for you and it's going to work just as good as some of those higher end saddles that are out there that you're paying an additional 15, 18, $2,000 for, you know, you can get something in the same amount of time as you can with this one. So I hope I, I can answer any questions that you might have. If you want to leave them down in the comment section, I hope this review is really helpful for you. Thank you for supporting my channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.